a surge protector. I think we should take this to bits. It's a Brennan stool or Brennan stool or Brennan stool. Not quite sure. Lightning and surge protection. Total surge current thirteen. It's now shouldn't that be a comma thirteen thousand five hundred amp or is it thirteen point five amp? Hmm. Premier line adapter, it says, Lightning and surge protection protects connected devices effectively against damage caused by overvoltages and avoids this high repair or replacement cost. Bit of grammatical problem there. Safe function with integrated thermal monitoring and function indicator. On the back, it offers a 5 million euros insurance cover for personal injury and material damage within the framework of our product liability insurance. And I'm guessing the framework probably avoids all liability. It's, I'm not even sure what this bit means, lightning and surge protection for, and it shows three gold stars for standard electronics, four silver stars for advanced electronics, and five silver stars for professional electronics. I'm not even sure what that kind of means. You'd think maybe the gold stars. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Let's open it up. Oddly, the languages are... Is that Arabic? Arabic, should I say? Arabic. So let's pop this open. I'm thinking there's a very good chance it's going to be PTC thermistors and uh, not PTC thermistors, uh, VDRs, metal oxide varistors, voltage dependent resistors. Ooh, it's quite slim. It's quite stylish. Oh no, and it's got triangular screws. That that's not good. I'm going to have to bring in the. So this, it's got this thing again, 13.5 amps. Is that 13,500? It's a bit indescriptive. Uh, there is a little LED down there that says protection on. It's it's a cheap LED. It's a gallium phosphide green. It's very, very dull. Uh, can you see it? And it's flickering on the camera. That suggests it's going to be a resistor in the series than LED, doesn't it? Right, let's see if I can find, let's forget a zap off the pins. No, I didn't. Get a screwdriver. We'll use this one because this one has a triangular option. Uh, where is it? Um, it's this bit might just do it. It's kind of it's those sort of slightly angled uh, triangular screws that this one just slips in. Oh no, it's going! It's going! It's going! It's not really optimised for taking to bits, but it will come to bits. It may even go back together again afterwards. So that's three of the screws out. What's it say in the back? Uh, live to neutral, 6kV, UP 1.8kV, live neutral to protective earth. So it does have stuff going to protective earth. Probably metal oxide roosters, maybe the little gas discharge things. We'll find out right now. So here is the protective circuit board. I see a gas discharge arrestor type thing. There's the little LED. How is this actually fixed in? Is it just... Oh, there's a screw. Uh, a, an ordinary a little uh, crosshead screw this time. This is the shutter, by the way, that uh, for the front, this front socket that you, have, when the earth pin goes in, it pushes those down to actually give access to the rest of the socket. What do we have? Right here, I tell you what we've got. For the indicator, is there a resistor? Oh, there's the resistor there. There's the resistor for the indicator, LED. And there is a diode in series with the indicator LED, so it's only lit halfway. We've got a gas arrestor going to the earth. And we've got the metal oxide varistors with two thermal fuses. Right, tell you what, let's just uh, zoom down this a bit. Or will I go... Uh, yeah, let's zoom down a tad. I'm not sure if there's much really here to take a picture of. So, there's live and neutral. They've got uh, Andy tracking slots, which is quite good. And the first thing that happens is, actually I'm going to have to get this heat shrink off to reveal more information. Will I doodle this down? That's probably the be best bet, isn't it? I shall doodle it down. I'll be back in a jiff. 
it has been reverse engineered. Let's take a look in detail. So we've got two thermal fuses. That's the white things. We've got a big metal oxide varistor in the middle, the main one. And then we've got two smaller metal oxide varistors. I'll explain that later. And a gas discharge tube. We've got the diode going to the LED and then going the other uh, leg of the LED through this 240K resistor to the other leg. Actually, they both connect on the uh, the thermal fuse side. Let's take a look at the schematic. So the supply comes in, and the first thing that happens is both live and neutral go through those thermal fuses. The reason for that is that these metal oxide varistors here, when they fail, they get hot. And if they get too hot, then it can cause problems and, well, basically fire, which you don't really want. But the main thing is that uh, when these get hot, because they were clumped together with this bit of heat shrink sleeving around them, it means that if any single one of these ones gets hot, it will trip the thermal fuse and that will basically cut the circuit out and it will stop anything going any further. The fuse is actually rated 115 degrees Celsius. So, We've got the live and neutral coming in through those fuses. It hits the big orangey, yellowish type uh, one in the middle, which is a 14D561K. What that means is 14 millimeters diameter is the 14D. And the 561K, 56 with one as a multiplier, 560 volts. And that's the voltage at which that will be passing one milliamp of current. So it will start turning on before that, but that's the point that they just standardize that the, the voltage is going to be the point at which it is passing that one milliamps. It seems to be a standard measurement reference. So the idea is that if there is a voltage transient, this resistor will uh, effectively shunt that. It will turn. It will lower in, in resistance and clamp that down. For the earth, we've got both live and neutral going through two uh, metal oxide resistors. This time, 14D431K. That's 14 millimeters diameter, 430 volts to pass one milliamp. And they're both commoned in the middle to a gas discharge tube here, which is then connected to earth. And I'm guessing they've done that to just purely avoid earth leakage. They could theoretically have had metal oxide varistors going straight to earth, but by using the gas discharge tube, it means an actual fault condition has to occur before any current will flow. And the gas discharge tube, which is this thing here, is... You get a couple of different types. You get the ones that are just have the electrodes in the vicinity, but usually they've got a gas inside them. wonder how they seal that. It's a, I guess it's at atmospheric pressure, so it's not that critical. The number here, I didn't really come up trumps with that, but it says ZD2 R600. I'm guessing that the 600 is the point it will actually arc across. And if that means that if there's a surge on live and and neutral, or live or neutral, or both of them, it will effectively pass through these metal oxide varistors and through this met, uh, this gas discharge tube to ground. It will shunt them out. Um, interesting notes about the gas discharge tube are that once it's struck, it's got a rough voltage. Typical units like this have a rough voltage across them of 20 volts. It's like a neon lamp. When it uh, reaches the discharge threshold, it sort of turns on and clamps down. It's rated for, well, going by uh, other similar units, it's rated to pass 10 amps for nine full main cycles, and that's its a lifespan, or 300 pulses of 100 amps, five pulses of 3,000 amps, or one big pulse of 5,000 amps. That's just, you know, it's just got a finite life um, of suppressing those surges. But it's interesting to note that uh, even if... These were to fail, actually not the, these, but if that gas discharge tube was to fail, there'd be no indication that the unit would potentially keep working unless these had suffered at the same time and started heating up and tripped the thermal fuses. Hmm. The green LED is just powered from both sides of those thermal fuses uh, through the diode, through the resistor. It will pass one milliamp, but it's only half wave, so it's about half a milliamp, and it's gallium phosphide green. It's the old technology green so it's just quite a dull glow and the only time it will go out is when one of these thermal fuses fails now that specification on the cover that is repeated everywhere 13.500 13,500 amp do you know what that is each of these metal oxide varistors and uh, not those those are the thermal fuses each of these metal oxide varistors is rated for a peak pulse current of 4,500 amps 
So if you add them all together, that's where you get the 13,500 amps. But really, when it comes to the crunch, it's just marketing wank. It doesn't really correlate to much at all. It's just a strange number they've picked out of thin air. I suppose you could say that it does at least give an indication of the ratings, the size of these, because they could have used smaller ones, the smaller diameter ones that have a lower energy absorbing capability. So, um, yeah, it's very simple. It's functional. It's got protection, I would expect it, from that particular brand and the fact it came from CPC in the UK. And I would say that it's quite functional in, enough that, you know, if you plug this, this in at a socket, it's not just going to protect what's plugged in the socket, it'll also protect other circuits in the vicinity because it is effectively just going to clamp uh, down across the mains. This is effectively just tapped. That plug side goes straight through to the socket and this is just tapped across. It doesn't interrupt the circuit in any way. So uh, this would provide protection to other things in the house. And it does have that little indicator to show when the at least the metal oxide resistors have failed. I, I think I'd trust this. I think this is quite acceptable. So it's not that bad at all. It is pretty much what I was expecting. Perhaps not the gas discharge tube, but then again, in hindsight, they do tend to use those quite a lot, don't they? So yeah, it's sensibly designed. It has the protection. It has the metal oxide resistors in every combination and the gas discharge tube tube to prevent leakage to earth causing problems with earth leakage circuit breakers and stuff like that or or even just stray current on rogue wiring with a floating earth sort of thing like that but yeah uh, that's quite acceptable i think that's quite a neat design it's quite a smart little unit and it achieves the function it's designed for as a general purpose surge suppressor <laughs>